And also, I want to kind of talk about the numbers gang now as well. Um, and the people that you met in prison. Did you meet any well-known gangsters during your time at Paul's Mall? No, I met, I met quite a few. You know, uh, I met like uh, Ernie Lasser was killed. You know, I met of the Poison Brothers. You know, this was uh, characters that was, you know, inside and outside. They were well-known, you know. Uh, I've met quite a few guys that isn't living anymore but were actually quite famous back in the day in prison, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I met people that, that you know, came to prison for killing other people, you know, and, and, and they were, like, recognized people, people with big names, you know, yeah. Mm. And you also became a very big name within the Numbers Gang. Um, and before we get into the Numbers Gang, uh, do you know what the history of the Numbers Gang is? Well, that is one thing that you have to learn as you grow older in the gang. The more you learn about where it comes from, how it begin, and whatever that you you know, this is part of the schooling of of of, of the number. The number wasn't uh, established to abuse people. The number wasn't established to sodomize people. The number wasn't established for that. The number was established to survive under severe circumstances. As from the mines, when the people began to dig mines in South Africa. That's exactly it, yeah. Yeah, and it began there because there were only men in the mines. And if you're not strong enough, you're a weak guy, they'll do anything to you, you know what I mean? I've written, I've written some stuff down here because I was doing some research and it's almost impossible to really, in one podcast, talk about the full history of the Numbers Gang because it's so, it's been around for such a long time, you know. Um, I'll, I'll read you what I've written. It says, how the Numbers Gang started. The Numbers Gang was started in the late 1800s, supposedly to protect black mine workers. Um, the Numbers Gang is a crime organization that started as a prison gang with one of the most fearsome reputations in South Africa. Although they were founded in KwaZulu-Natal, it is believed that they are present in most African prisons. The gang is divided into groups or camps named the 26s, 27s, and 28s. Uh, you are part of the 28s. Um, and the other non-gang members called Vafis, which means woman. Um, the 26s are responsible for gambling, smuggling, and acquiring wealth in general. So they kind of are the money people. Is that correct? There are people who talk about the gangs and they want, like the 26s, they say they uh, are people who accumulate money and everything. But money is such an entity that all those groups needs money to survive. You need money, you know, with money, you got power. You know, that isn't actually the thing. The thing is, um, the 26s are the people um, responsible for getting us information out of the, the offices of the warders. They want to know everything that happens yeah, and then they, they report back. Are the guys who bring the 27th and 28th information, mm. what they can react upon because the 27th and the 28th are more, um, how can I say, uh, they like fighting the waters. With, yeah, you know, it says the 28th, sorry, and also sorry to interrupt, but it says the 28th are the warriors and responsible for fighting on behalf of all the three groups and the the 27s are the guardians of gang law and the peacekeepers between all the gangs. Is that accurate? This is Wikipedia. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, Josh, there's so much um, to say about the gangs that uh, you don't know when you're getting the actually accurate information. But me, I was an inquisitive guy and I used to go out and ask the elders, you know, because the elders, this is a thing that comes actually from uh, the black people, you know what I mean? And they said before, Henry, the colors mustn't come into the number because they didn't have a tradition that they follow. Like they follow, they go to the bush, they become a man, you know what I mean? And then you, like, are in Dorda. And in prison, it's almost like similar, but then you just have to do something dangerous to be in the dangerous group, you know what I mean? The number was actually created to, uh, for survival, man. And, and, and they had to be, uh, uh, I can say, they had to be victims and they had to be perpetrators. 
You know what I mean? Because to get something right, you have to show strength. You know, and, 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 and where do you show strength other than your ex-inmate, you know what I mean? Mm. And uh, those who stabbed the waters were had more authority than the, the ones that, uh, you know, didn't uh, fully understand why you must stab a warder. Because mm, anyone can stab a prisoner, but the warders are like the people that are seen as like untouchable and the prize, I guess. You know, to stab a warder, you alone. And imagine like 50, 60 warders comes upon you and begins to hit you. You know, it's, it's they hit you broken, man. You know, you're a broken person when you dare finish. Something you were saying earlier is that the, the numbers gang is, it is confusing because I think there's been a lot of misinformation. And uh, every time I speak to a gang member, there's kind of a different version of the events, you know, and of how things unra unra unraveled. One of the things we do know is that the, the 28s are the, the highest ranking. Well, actually, um, they the first who was the, it was first the 28s, you know, and right then the 27s and in prison, Actually, the 26 became uh, had the uh, power to be as an entity, as a, as a uh, like we call it a gang. But um, the truth is that these three uh, uh, gang prison gangs, there's law between them that they couldn't hurt each other, they couldn't stab each other, they couldn't do anything to each other. But they had to face one uh, common enemy, and that was the waters. Because at that time the world was evil, brother. You know, nobody could have seen what they have done inside. As um, today, the presence is more available to people from the outside world who comes in, who does programs with these prisoners, and uh, it's, 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 it, it takes a, a lot of, uh, I can say, um, power off. Because back in the day, if you killed somebody, you got to hang. In prison, if you've done a murder in prison, you get hanged. And that made that people were afraid of going that far. You know, but today, you know, to, 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 to get life in prison, it's almost like uh, if you become one of the uh, the big one, names in prison, then you live a luxury life. You live a good life, yeah. Exactly. And how did you rise the ranks <clears throat> and become a, a leader of the 28s? What kind of things did you need to do? I had to stab orders. I had to uh, plan a lot of things to do, you know what I mean? Because uh, we needed to sustain ourselves in prison. So we, the first thing is we had to have drugs in prison because the selling of drugs, you know, creates uh, money, money creates power. And uh, we had to do all these things ourselves, you know? And you that had the, the most were reckoned as, you know, the best, uh, pitcher or catcher or carrier, whatever you were, you know what I mean? And uh, that became a norm, you know, because we were very competent against other, the colored people. Actually, the colored people is more, can I say, to be blamed for acting out violently against each other. Because these were gangs that were fighting each other outside. And now they bring it into prison and they bring it into the number, which weren't there before, you know what I mean? And uh, uh, and it's getting to the extreme that we, you can phone now to a prison where one of your enemy is that killed one of your family members and you can phone into prison and say to them, you must take this guy out. There's this and this amount of money, you know? And then they do it. It's, it's more, um, Communication between the outside world and prison world is more tighter than it was before. <coughs> before, you couldn't have a phone because there wasn't cell phones back in my day. And uh, there was uh, not TVs, there was nothing like that. So how did they communicate, you know, it was by writing letters outside, but you, you, your letters were censored. So you couldn't write anything in a letter, you know? And so we created the thing that we write the letter we swallow it, we go out, yeah, we sit it out, you know, and open it up, and that was a way of, of communicating to the outside world. Today, so you would give those letters to to people outside of the prison? Yes. That come visit you or whatever? Yeah, yes, you know, 
and uh, then if you recognize uh, a member, you you'll be uh, help, you know, like giving you drugs to sell outside or whatever. You get the position outside, but back in the day, that wasn't there. <laughs> 